This is Rare, a completed model from a cancelled stop-motion project. A scratch-built showman's engine made from cardstock. I was able to fabricate moving parts and make it convertible into a traction engine too. Here's how it was done in case you want to have a go at making something similar for yourself. For context, I was previously asked by Bluebell Railway to make animated adverts for their Fenchurch 150th birthday event and beer festival weekend, which you can see on their site. The project was sadly cancelled, but there were plans to make a third one for their steam fair, which featured the railway engines alongside a Victorian fairground. In the likelihood that an advert would also be needed for the Road Meets Rail event, I thought a showman's engine would be the perfect prop. When this was dropped, I had already got a good head of steam making it. So here it is on show. Man. <laughs> For flat pieces, like these wheels, I used 1mm thick mount board, and cut several spoked discs so that these could be layered to give the illusion of depth. For curved pieces, like the tyres and the boiler, I used 0.2mm thick greetings card material. The tyres were wrapped around the edge of the wheels, and everything on the model is held together with superglue. These machines weren't built for rough ploughing fields, so I went for two road treads instead. Everything is based around the boiler, and this was made from wrapping thin card around thick card circles. The firebox was then a box shape cut to fit. Both sets of wheels obviously had to spin, but the front ones needed to turn as well, and this was done by making an axle using a box of card. An eyelet, used for making shoes and clothing, acted as the bearings. Being metal, these prevented friction. A circular housing holds a small strip of dowel, which is prevented from falling out by yet more card. The steering housing was then attached to the bottom of the smoke box, and the dowel attached to the axle. All very confusing. But with another stick of dowel wood going through the bearings meant that the wheels could spin. If that wasn't complicated enough, then on top of the boiler I also wanted to make a working flywheel as it's one of the most appealing moving parts on these sorts of road engine. A cylinder was made from another box of card with a hole for a cocktail stick to go through the center. This would be the piston rod, and attached to it was a connecting rod, running along flat pieces of card on the top and bottom of the cylinder to act as slide bars. The flywheel itself was made the same way as the actual wheels, but attached only on one side of the frame with a crank on the other. This was aided by a small metal washer, and a pin ran from the crank through the other end of the connecting rod. Who thought making a card model would involve so much technicality? Me. <laughs> Being stop motion, I could save myself the sweat of motorising everything, rather it would have all been moved by hand between each frame. With the difficult moving bits done, the main shape of the vehicle had to change. A bunker was glued either side of the firebox, and a very rough cab built around that shape. At the front, a reusable straw was used for the chimney, with card and air drying clay wrapped around the top and the base to smooth out the shape. Now, for those who haven't seen one of these showman's engines themselves, they were often used in fairgrounds to power the rides, mostly fitted with roofs and sometimes with musical sirens and whistles to make a fuss of themselves. I wanted to make the roof removable on mine, because I had a sneaky plan to extend the prop's use, which you'll see in a minute. The roof was made from using another bit of card, curved over some ornate bracing. A hole for the chimney was cut out, and cocktail sticks used to raise the roof. The big red drum thing needed an extension to the smoke box. So I made this how the front end of the roof would sit on the model, with the rear end fitting into the bunker. As these machines sat still for most of their job, some of them were fitted with extendable chimneys, which I included with another piece of drinking straw and a cradle for it to sit on the roof when not in use. 
a handbrake was made using another cocktail stick, with the two ends being used on the smoke box door. To detail the red drum, the end of a superglue lid was cut and stuck on. Not accurate to anything, but it gives it more shape. Kit bashing. It's not often I get so far into a model without having painted anything first, but it makes it look the part like it's a pencil sketch made 3D. As a nice work in progress comparison, here's the finished build next to Fenchurch. You can see how I built that in another video, as well as behind the scenes on the animations it's featured in. Now to give the model some life, or should I say two lives. I don't know whether I'll get the time to build a traction engine at a later date, so I thought it wise to make this model convertible into one. On one side I painted it in its intended red, with yellow wheels and gold lining inspired by several prototypes. On the other, I went for a classic green with red stripes. In a similar fashion, but not exactly, Trevor. Hello Henry. You're very nice, Trevor, puffed Henry, but you wouldn't make a very good flagpole. Should I ever need a close-up of Trevor, then the option is always there to paint the other side as well. The red one, for now, could use a name and some sign writing on the roof. But I haven't thought of what to call it yet. Anyone got any ideas? Since it's been finished, it's been sitting in the display cabinet, waiting for the day when it will get to feature in an animation like intended. I wonder if that day will ever come. Don't you? I hope you've enjoyed seeing progress photos of how this traction slash showman's engine came to be. Of course, as a channel patron, you'll have known about this for many months now. If you'd like to contribute towards models like this and future animations, then consider joining us by following the link in the description to get a bunch of rewards. A big thank you to all of my brilliant patrons Alex Goodman, GBH Train, D0280 Falcon, Sean Tempest, Nat, Random Thomas Fan, Ego, Dark White 73, The Sudrian Git, Peter Davenport, Andrew Diak, and Mr. Top Hatter.